All right. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you're at, wherever you are. I am Roger Ruffin. I'm Senior Application Engineer with Computer Aided Technologies. And this presentation is the intro to routing. And we're going to be showing you piping and tubing. First off, a little bit about myself. I've been with Computer Aided Technologies for uh, coming on six years. Uh, we are, you can see the, the screen there, the United States. We're very proud to say that we are uh, in every time zone. So we have many different offices. Uh, I've been using SOLIDWORKS for over 20 years, started in 1998. I also had some sales experience for about five years. And then the one thing here is I am a Milwaukee Bucks fan, so fear the deer. Okay. So here's the agenda that we're going to do today. We're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the functionalities of SOLIDWORKS that you'll be utilizing when you're creating these routes. Take a look at some of the design library features that are easy enough just to drag and drop onto your components to start that route or continue that route. We'll look at one area of the routing library, which is the component wizard. So when you have these components, you need to set up some connection points and route points. And I'll go through the process of creating those on this fitting that we're going to use. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a tube routing. We'll do a piping route. We'll create a drawing. And then I can just show you that there are some additional resources out there. And if you guys have any questions, I will get those answers. So let's look at the functionality of SOLIDWORKS. So, you know, I, I hope you guys are using configuration and design tables. Uh, so we're going to be utilizing those. So basically, you're going to have that tube or that elbow, even the connectors that could have uh, many different sizes. Um, so, yeah, configuration and design tables. Also, the design library. Have that central location of where those fittings and elbows and connectors and flanges are. Like I said, you can just do a simple drag and drop to get your route started. Also, the 3D sketching. So when you're creating these routes, you're going to be utilizing 3D sketch. When you're using a flexible route, that is going to create a spline. But when you're using a rigid um, routing, you're actually going to be using a 3D sketch. You can hit your tab key when you're working with 3D sketch to get to the different planes, the three primary planes, your Y, Z, X, Y, Z, Y, and so forth. All right. Right here at the bottom here, try auto route first. I would definitely try the auto route because SOLIDWORKS is going to generate that route and give you a few, uh, give you a few solutions, all right, Alter alternative routes, okay? So here's the design library. SOLIDWORKS gives you many different library features, such as the tube and the flanges. And you've got some straight uh, connectors here, fittings, couplings, some reducers, some unions. So there's a lot of components that SOLIDWORKS gives you to work with. You can take those components, do a file, save as, and modify it per your application. Um, or you can use other resources, and like I said, I'll mention that uh, towards the end of this presentation where you can get those other documents or components. In regards to the piping, we've got the elbows, 45, 90 degrees, some flanges. You can also drop and drag some pumps or some tanks. So again, SOLIDWORKS gives you a great start with this library. You can also bring in some valves some check valves. So that uh, makes it easier for us. So right here, guys, we have is the Routing Library Manager. And this tool right here is basically um, setting up those components, uh, like the Routing Component Wizard um, or Covering Library Wizard. So if you've got refrigerant line that needs to have some insulation, that would be the covering. Uh, you would utilize this part of the library manager. Uh, you also have your routing file locations and settings where your templates are going to be located, the, the component parts and whatnot. So this right here is a very cool tool. All right. 
So right here is the component wizard manager that we're going to utilize, creating those route points, those uh, connection points and so forth. And when I say C point or connection points, the C points are used to determine where the route ends and the direction that uh, enters the fitting or the connector. Okay, that's the C point. Your R points are used to place the fitting on that endpoint on the 3D sketch route line, okay? And SOLIDWORKS talks to you. It, it, it tells you, hey, you're missing some information or whatnot. So let's go through that process. And let me do this. So we need to have the connector open. And you can see the R point, C point, and the axis of rotation was already created. I'm just going to hide those real quick. And we'll go ahead and create our own. Come on. <clears throat> I'll just suppress them. All right, so it's easy enough to launch the routing library manager. And we can get to that from the tools, routing, routing tools, and we could launch it. And since I have it already launched, SOLIDWORKS would talk to me and say, hey, man, you already got me open. So what we're going to do here is go ahead and create these C points. And I hope I don't be too, too much teachy here. I'm, I'm actually a, an instructor 75% of the time I, I teach. So if I get a little teachy, sorry about that, guys. So here we go. The route type is going to be tubing. We're going to use other fittings. And we'll just say next. This is where SOLIDWORKS is going to say, hey, man, let's go ahead and create those points. Depending on the connector or the fitting, you might have one connector, you might have two connectors, you might have three or four, okay? And SOLIDWORKS will let you know that, what's needed and whatnot. So let's go ahead and add a C point here. And with this connector here, I want that face right there, and you can see the preview. That's where the route is going to come out. The route type is two. We've got some parameters here, the stub line. Talk about the stub link here in a second. Whenever you see options, play around with them, see what results you're going to get. Hit the green check mark, and you can see one present. Let's go ahead and do our point. In this case here, there is a sketch that I created and added that point. So that's going to be my point. SOLIDWORKS is talking to us saying, okay, man, you look good there. So let's go ahead and click Next. And now SOLIDWORKS is really going to let us know that the model is complete and we're ready to, to move on. Oh, I'm sorry. I take that back. I mean, see, this is, I did that on purpose. SOLIDWORKS wants us to add a vertical uh, axis here. Let's go ahead and add that axis. Actually, in this case, it's going to be a horizontal one that's going to help the axle rotation. And again, if you already have an existing one, you could use existing. In this case, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and select new. And it's pretty much just like going into your reference geometry and clicking on axes. Here's our axes. Hit the green check. Now we can go ahead and have SOLIDWORKS say that we're good to go validating this part. There we go. Nothing's missing. Part model is complete. Like Jay-Z said, on to the next one. And right here is we're going to be working with the design table. It should open up for a split second here. So if you're utilizing a design table, if you created those configurations already, that's cool. You can just, uh, it, it's, it's going to identify that, okay? So you can see we've got a bunch of different configs. Here's the design table that we used. And what we could do is we could open that design table up right there and start going to town, creating some more configs or whatnot. In this case, we're good to go. If you needed to add any additional 
uh, attributes here, you could. And then this one here is pretty much finishing up, saving that component out as that part name, putting it in that design library folder. In this case here, I've already got it created, so I'm just going to go ahead and close this out or minimize this. Okay, that right there is creating the C points, the R points, and so forth. And now we're ready to rock and roll and create some routings. The two routes you can see on the left there, that's going to be our flexible holes. Again, we're, it, SolidWorks is going to create that spline for us. And on the right there, you can see there is a bent tube, the rigid. And again, what I did is I just went ahead and used the auto route. You can use it for both. And I would start there, everyone. Try using that auto route to see if that's going to give you the configuration that you need or that look, that result that you want. And then also, we can actually route through clips, and I'll show you that as well. So let's go ahead and generate a flex route. Simple drag and drop. Going right to my library here. Minimize this fittings. And all I'm going to do here is just a simple left mouse click and hold and drag. And why aren't you okay? Give me a second. No worries. Let me do like this. Never fails when you're doing a presentation. Something wants to act up on you. All right. Now let's See if we can get this bad boy going. Now we're cooking. And I'm going to grab the appropriate configuration, quarter by quarter brass fitting. And what that's going to do now is it places it, and now the route property is going to come up, and the name of this assembly is going to be tubing 010. Right here is the template that we're using. This should be the feet and inch route assembly. You could actually click on the little button right here and go and pick and choose another template if you like, as well as the tube. You can see by using this connector, it's saying, okay, I'm using this tube, SS. And within that tube, we have some configurations with the wall thickness. In this case here, I'm just going to use the 10,000 thick wall. Right here, is use flexible hoses. And you could click that, click that little tick box, and that will create the flex hose automatically for you. Or if you happen to forget to click that tick box, there's a way that we can still make that routing flexible. So I'm going to keep that unchecked. Yep. Center line is good. This right here is our bend, uh, our minimum bend radius. So if the radius was, you know, less than a quarter of an inch, SolidWorks is going to give you a warning telling you to fix it. All right. Cool. And you can see we are starting that tubing subassembly route. And let me go ahead and drag and drop with this fitting. Right. Yeah. Get on there, bad boy. We'll use the 250, 250 again. And you can see these are the stub lines, okay? That stub length was at 750 when, when I was uh, starting to create this route. And this is what I was telling you guys as far as what to start with. I would go ahead and use the auto route. Okay? Now remember, I didn't check that use flexible holes. So SOLIDWORKS is going to have the orthogonal route selected. I'm going to uncheck that. And the thing of it is, is when I come over here and click this stub line point, SOLIDWORKS is pretty much just, just saying, dude, are you sure you want this to be flexible? I'm going to say, mm-hmm, yep, I'm going to uncheck you. And then let's go ahead and click on this stub line endpoint. Bam. And I just created that flexible route. I can get out of my auto route. And if I need be, I can actually modify this spline, this route. I'm going to say OK to that. And 
I'm using my D key to bring my confirmation corner to my cursor so I don't have to do all that travel. And I had mentioned to you guys that you can route through clips. So let me go ahead and drag in a clip. And I know that you're going to want to be a little funky here. Yep, I'm going to make this coincident and where did you place it? Yep, way over there. No worries. Let's go ahead and just move that bad boy about right here. Okay. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to use move with try and I'm just going to rotate this bad boy. Yeah, about like yeah, it's good. Okay. Now, it's easy enough to go ahead and route through that clip. And what I can do is I can go ahead and edit this route. And I'm simply going to use Route Edit Through Clip. And I'm going to grab the spline and our axes. Bam, there you have it. It's that easy, good to go. And you could make some modifications to that spline if you wanted as well. Okay, that right there is the flex holes. And let's go ahead and create a rigid. This is going to be a rigid bent tube. We'll go ahead and use the same straight fitting. We're going to use a 380-380 here. Well, property, I'm good to go. Three eighty, three eighty, and then we can go ahead and do the auto route. And in this case here, I will check that orthogonal route, and I'm going to go ahead and select subline endpoints. Now I'm using my right mouse button here to filter through the different scenarios. You could come over here and make different selections as well. And which one am I using here? I think I'm using that one. What's that one there? And let's go back to this one. I'm cool with that. And then what we can do, we are in a sketch. This is actually the 3D sketch, and they were actually drawing this on the different uh, XZ or ZX, YZ, and so forth. Okay. And we can modify this. Again, it is a sketch. We can dimension this to get it fully defined. Let me dimension this stub length. Two is good. And we'll make that, uh, let's do three on that one. Awesome. And there you have it. There is our flexible and rigid subassemblies. And let's just take a look here. So for this flex subassembly, and in every subassembly, you have the components folder, you're going to have a um, route part folder, and you can see the components are the fittings, the route part is the tube, and then here's your route itself. And you can simply edit that route to modify that sketch and so forth. Again, the fittings and the tube. Okay. All right. So that right there is the tubing portion. And now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and take a look at the piping portion, okay? This can be PVC pipe, uh, welded pipe, galvanized. And again, you're going to be using, or we're going to be using a 3D sketch and using the auto route. And SolidWorks can actually bring in, you know, the elbow section at 90 degrees or 45. You can add other fittings or other valves, and I'll show you that as well.
So I'm going to go ahead and create a pipe or a route from this valve, excuse me, to this uh, neck flange. And oops, go to my library. I'm going to go ahead and use a well flange here. Again, a simple drag and drop. And I'm going to use, hello, wrong one. Okay, come on, SolidWorks, work with me now. This should be a six inch diameter. There we go, now we're cooking. 150 MPS6, I'm good with that. Again, our route property is going to show up here in our property manager. Sub assembly name, it's using that feet inch route assembly, and it's grabbing that pipe, and it knows that it's a six inch pipe, schedule 40 different configurations, 80, uh, 81, 21, 60. We'll use the 40. And let's see, okay. And then we can go ahead and drag another one on. Use that 150 MPS6. There's our stub lines, and we'll just use the auto route. Orthogonal is good. Would you look at there? You could filter through and look at some alternate paths. And I want this one. Again, we can modify this if we need be. Make that a little bit bigger. We can go ahead and dimension this to get this fully defined. That's a good number. And there you have it. There is that piping route. And like I said, we can add valves to this. And again, what we're going to need to do is go ahead and edit this route. And I'm going to use, well, where are you at now? I'm having a brain fart. <clears throat> oh my gosh, where's my valves? There we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just drag and drop. We'll drag and drop this valve here and put it right on that line. SolidWorks is talking to me with the configuration. That's the one I want. Bam. There you go. Right here, SolidWorks is saying, hey, man, do you want to continue just to place it at that point, or do you want us to shorten up that, that length? And I'm going to say no because I want it in that position. And the cool part about it is I can come in here and I can rotate this bad boy so that the maintenance guy doesn't have to wiggle his way up in there or, you know, it's just easier position like that. And if I want it to, I can take one this swing check valve here and I can pop that sucker right there. Boop. I'll use that 150. I'm good. We'll say no, just drop it there for me. If we wanted to, we could rotate. That's a little bit better clear. So I'm just going to leave it as is. And we can go ahead and confirm that assembly, that subassembly. Okay? All right? It's just that easy, man. SolidWorks is just making uh, routing that simple. So the other thing that we can do is we can create a drawing. And we can create a drawing from, you know, the piping or the tube. And it's this simple. Click on the pipe drawing. It is going to uh, use the default templates that you have set up. I'll just use the bomb and then I could check another. We can include all balloons. Show the route sketch, and let's hit the green check. Yep, so we're just saying, hey, man, there is a column missing, the linked column. Do you want to add it? I'm going to say sure, go for it. 
Uh oh, I grabbed the wrong format, didn't I? There we go. Now we're cooking. It's so easy of creating, bringing in that sheet format. So you can see that SolidWorks auto balloon this bad boy. We've got our components and its items. You might have to do some tidying up, guys, guys and gals. I can come in here and say, you know what? I want you to show me the component type. Maybe I want to have this as the nominal diameter, or it's another good one. Pipe identifier. I think you guys get the gist. There's the length of those components. And you could create, you know, another sheet and bring in, you know, the right and left and front view if you wanted to by just dragging and dropping. Just bring in a couple of views here. And if need be, we can go ahead and add some center lines to these components if we want. We could, say, select the whole entire view and drag those suckers in there. And then you could add dimensions to it as well. So it's pretty much that simple, that easy, to create these routings for either piping or tubing. So that, that's it for the presentation. There's the drawings. I forgot to go to that slide, but that's the drawing part of it. And then right here, there are some additional libraries that you can actually uh, download. So if you were to go to your SolidWorks content folder and expand that, expand your routing folder, click on either the DIN or the ISO, and whatever's in that folder, you're just going to need to do a control and then click on that folder and it'll start to download. And then you can have some additional components to work with. And this slide right here, guys, just showing I do believe SolidWorks routing uh, was released in, I think it was 2009. So over the years, they have definitely brought in or, or made some great enhancements. Elbows and pipes uh, supported in, in the pack and go in 2016. Reuse routes a couple years ago. 2019, they've uh, added the piping and tubing database that can be used in a library. So SolidWorks has definitely, oh, and this is a good one, the pipe nipples added to the design library. That was a good one as well. And then there's some additional resources that you can go out and, you know, read up on some material. I, I think a good one here is the SolidWorks World presentation. Go to their website, find the presentation, and take a look at the presentations for the pipe routings, drawings, well templates, and so forth. And then here's some additional websites that you can go to to get some other components with MasterCar. But don't forget, guys, 3D Content Central, to me, that's just a brotherhood of SolidWorks users putting what they've already created out on that site so that we can use, so we don't have to generate that, that geometry or that part. So some additional or 3D Content Central Definitely a great place to go. And then with that, guys, please go out and visit our website, www.cati.com. If you are a subscriber of ours, if we're your bar, then you can go ahead and email technical support at cati.com or give us a call. I'm in the Wisconsin area, so central time will be 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., 12 hours of support Monday through Friday. So please give us a call if you guys have any questions or concerns with, you know, what's going on with SolidWorks. Also, check out our blog. So if you go to cati.com forward slash blogs, our text, we have to create blogs every day. It could be anywhere from creating a route. 3D printers, simulation. I actually created a blog 
or creating a pipe, pipe routing. And I basically just showed you what that blog is about. Okay. Also did some other blogs, create routing specification templates, electrical route. So you can also create an electrical route as well. And there was the piping route. So with that being said, if we have any questions, we can go ahead and answer some questions. Uh, one popped up here about wondering whether or not the elbows were called out in the parts list in the drawing that you made. That right there was actually a bent. Uh, oh, that was a bent yeah. tube. There that you go. That was a bent tube, yes. So, yeah, that's a great question because what you can do is if you have threaded elbows, you can actually, yeah, where are you at here? Right here. So if I was creating a piping route that needed a 90 degree threaded elbow, yes, I can just drag and drop uh, where that where the radius would be, okay? So yes, you could. Threaded uh, laterals, absolutely. And it would have shown up in our bill of material. It would just be a component uh, a component part of that assembly, absolutely. No different than the, the valves that we added in here. Okay? Well, I don't see any more questions coming in, Roger. Um, so mm -hmm. thank you so much for that presentation. Um, I realize that I've been doing things the wrong way by deleting my flexible routes to reroute them through a clip as opposed to use the route through clip functionality. So. Mm -hmm. uh, I love it when I learn something on these. Always something new. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty slick, man. It really is. So I'll say thank you so much for everyone joining us today. A uh, few webinars we've got coming up over the next month and a half. We've got our Catapult next week talking about the Evaluate Toolbar in SolidWorks and all the cool things you can do there. Last week in May is our hardware presentation, so talk more about the desktop metal system. We're getting a lot of feedback on that. Next month, we'll do a little bit on SOLIDWORKS inspections, and one that I think a lot of people are really going to like. It's going to be a great presentation. The AE doing it is fantastic. Uh, zero to Hero, talking about surfacing in SOLIDWORKS. So I hope to see some familiar names in these next webcasts coming up. And again, thank you so much for joining us. Roger, thank you so much for your presentation, and everyone have a great rest of your day. You're welcome. You're welcome. And then also, thank you very much for coming, guys and gals.